Good evening. My name is Ruth and this is Faye Hollow Homestead. Uh, a while ago, we got a bunch of eggs and we put them in our incubator. We had geese eggs, we had duck eggs, we had chicken eggs, we had guinea eggs, we had quail eggs. We only had one quail egg hatch. Now, this quail was very lonely, so we stuck it in with a guinea that was really tiny uh, and they bonded, but after a while, the guineas started getting bigger. We thought maybe the quail is big enough now to put them in with the guineas. So while they were in our house, we like to keep them in our, in our living room while we're, uh, while we're uh, raising them, while they still have the heat lamp on and they're in their, their bin. Uh, we had like three bins going. It was really, it was a wild time and it was really fun. The kids loved it, I loved it. Jeremy loved it. So this one quail that we had was doing really good with the guineas. And so when it was time, everybody was big enough, they all had their big feathers. We took them and we put them down into the into the nursery outside and unfortunately that was a mistake. So this is what happened. This poor little guy, you can see his ears on either side of his head and you're not supposed to be able to see the ears. His feathers are all stuck down to him because of the blood. You can see they took some feathers out on that side of his body. Right here. Yeah, and he's just not having a good time. So I put probiotics, Pedialyte, electrolytes, all in this water for him. And he is in here all by himself. Hopefully that'll perk him up a little bit. He's got his own special quail food. Oh, poor guy. So the next day, you can hear the thunder, I bet. The next day I went out and I checked on the guineas and the quail and the poor quail was almost dead. Uh, she had holes pecked into her head near where her ears were and they were bleeding and she was just traumatized and, and it was not good. And so I snatched her up as fast as I could and I brought her back in and she became living, she started a very solitary lifestyle, which is unfortunate because birds are definitely flock animals if they're poultry and um, a quail will do much better with a friend. So this is what happens when you have a lone quail that does not have any friends. We let her just kind of free range in the house and this is our house pet quail. So for me, the most important thing was to get more quails. And so I ordered some quail eggs on Etsy, uh, made sure that they were fertile, got them. We ordered about 36 of them. And after about 18 days to the day, they started popping out like popcorn. excited. Now, in the meantime, our little quail named Bubbles was like the light of our life, right? And we just absolutely adored her. Uh, and she became like an indoor quail pet. And um, she grew, she got better. She got a lot better. Uh, she healed up. Uh, and and she's just she's a very special kind of quirky quail because she didn't really get raised with very many other animals so uh, she's got a little quirk story and it's super cute so here's bubbles so this is our baby quail we found out that it's a girl because she is now laying eggs and her name is what do we what do we call her the kids call her bubbles bubbles is her name and she is super friendly. This is how Jeremy enjoys his evenings relaxing. Phone and quail. Now the quail, once they started hatching, 
Uh, they were still not big enough to put into the same bin with bu Bubbles because Bubbles was full grown at this point. She was laying eggs of her own. It only takes them seven weeks to get fully grown. And so uh, we had to wait for them to get bigger in order for her to be able to mingle with them because we didn't want to hurt them either if she got aggressive. Now we did do a couple of experiments where we put her in very carefully, watched what was happening, and she was actually really sweet with the babies because she would just settle in and she'd tuck them underneath her wings. It was really sweet. Very quickly, we actually ended up putting Bubbles in with the babies because she was just really good with them and she loved them and we knew that she needed company. Uh, there was one problem that we had with the hatching though, and, um, and I'm really glad that we caught it. All the eggs had hatched like a day and a half before and we were looking at the eggs, just trying to gauge if anything else was gonna happen. Um, and one of the eggs wiggled a little bit. And I looked at it and it wiggled again. And so I had to go to work. I came back from work and it wasn't wiggling anymore. So I picked it up and I looked underneath and there's a little tiny bit of a dent in there, but there was no hole, there was no pipping, nothing like that really. Like it just looked like there was a dent in the crack or in the in the eggshell. And so I had to crack open the eggshell because at this point we were two days past when the last quails hatched. So I cracked open the egg and I peeled off all the eggshell because apparently quail uh, can sometimes need a lot more uh, hands-on help with hatching than other poultry. The egg that I helped hatch she was absolutely ready to get out and um and she struggled though for a while and her uh feet because she struggled so much she was she was very weak she didn't get up and stand and and walk around like most babies do as soon as they hatch and so her feet while they were in the shell you know they're curled up like this and they stayed that way and so i had to intervene i tried to help and i did did help some okay here's sweet baby right here and you can see her feet She's not, she's not getting up on her, on her feet because they're curled, and so she's not able to stand real well. So I'm just gonna kind of help her a little bit. Now, quail's feet are so tiny that um, that these little, this grate right here, it's real easy for them to get their feet stuck in that. So I have her on top of this, this paper towel to keep her from getting stuck. But she's doing real good, I think. I mean, she's really starting to perk up a lot more. It was real stressful for her right after she got out of the egg. And so she's been, oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to flatten out her feet. She's definitely been perking up and getting a lot more energy lately though. I might end up having to put some splints on her feet. You got it. You're really cute with your little panda feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, we might need to put a little frame around her. <laughs> right. Keep her up, right? <laughs> put her little... Oh, there. Oh. Yeah. Hey, there, there's a little bit of balance going on. <laughs> Look at you standing up. Oh, never mind. Okay. Okay, seems like he's sitting up a little bit now. Um, I'm gonna let him just kind of hang out for a while and see if as he gets a little bit older, he'll get a little bit stronger. Just spending as much time as I can with him so that I can kind of help him out. I really hope he lives. He's doing a little bit better. Yeah, he's drank some water now and he's had some food, so that's good. Um, he's actually, he falls over sometimes, but he's able to kind of get himself back up too, which is a really big deal. See, just like that. I'm getting hopeful. So to give you an idea of how tiny these baby quail are, look at this, this is the end of my thumb right next to him. Like he's just about the size of my, the tip of my thumb. They are so little, so cute. So Curly is what we ended up naming that chick because the curly feet. 
ended up doing really good and learned how to walk on his or her own um, and just kind of get along even though that the one foot stayed somewhat curled and there he or she is trying to walk kind of sideways on it but she's doing really good and and she's surviving and she's thriving running around just as much as the other chicks so this one right here is curly I don't know if you can see the way her feet are do you see her feet so they're curled her toes are curled but she's doing really good I'm gonna change out their bedding tomorrow and she gets around just like the rest of them which is a big deal because I was afraid that this would be kind of a death sentence for her if she wasn't able to start moving around and, and being able to get to the water and the food on her own. So now the quail are getting older, right? And they've all got their feathers. They kind of look like raptors. It's crazy. And they're in the house and they're able to jump out of the bin very easily. And so uh, we find quail running around all over the place. So now what we really want to do is get them out of the house. Bubbles is enjoying their company and they're just about as big as she is almost. It seems like it's crazy how fast they grow. So this one is curly. If you can see, she still has a little bit of curled toes, but watch her as she gets around. Even though her foot is curled up under her just a little bit, she gets around pretty good. You almost can't tell. Yeah, they are flying a little bit. Every once in a while they'll get like a wild hair and they'll jump up and fly out of the bin. So we'll have like a random quail running around the house a little bit. We're used to bubbles, but these other babies. What I did was I wrapped hardware cloth around a dog crate, a wire dog crate, and set it in the grass. So there's there's a little bit of wire on the bottom, uh, but the grass is able to come through quite a lot. And so they're able to forage, they're able to eat grass and bugs, and they're able to kind of wallow in the dirt a little bit, do their dust baths, and be outside. And so that's where they are today. So now uh, we are going to be making them nesting boxes. We're going to make them perches in here. We're going to put a roof on here. Uh, but basically all I did was put hardware cloth around the outside because they're so little and I didn't want anything to get inside and get them. So we're trying to keep them safe. In the meantime, I'm going to bring them in at night. And it, it, when it storms, like you can kind of hear that there's a storm coming right now. Um, so they're coming in very soon. But they've been out here for a little while and they absolutely love it. This is the baby's first time being out and and you can just tell that they are they are loving it. So we are not going to let them free range at all. We are going to do rotational rotational grazing with them. We're just going to basically move their their crate uh, every day basically uh, to a new spot and so that's going to regenerate the soil in our area. That's also going to keep them with fresh food and keep them uh, from getting dirty because they're you know sitting in their own filth we don't have to clean out the cage as much because you know there's not a whole bunch of poop building up on the bottom of the of the ground that they are at, on and so I think this is just gonna work really well for everybody so basically this is our quail tractor so let me do give you a couple of shots of them and then I got to bring them in because the storm is coming pretty quickly it's getting dark already and um, let me introduce you to our quail who are now outside. Do you guys feel that storm coming in? 
I hope you don't worry. I'm gonna get you out of here before it comes, okay? So you may wonder why did we do quail? Why is quail so important that we had to do two orders right away make sure that we had some for bubbles? And first of all, if you have an animal, take care of it. So bubbles needed company. So we were gonna do everything in our power to make sure she had company. Second of all, quail has got to be the most valuable homesteading bird, poultry, meat animal that you could possibly have. 18 days for the eggs to hatch. Excuse the guineas in the background, please. <laughs> 18 days for guinea for quail to hatch, which is really fast for eggs. Uh, another thing is it takes seven weeks for them to mature and produce eggs. So, whereas chickens are like six months, right? Turkeys, much longer. Geese, longer than that. So, if you want to have something that has a quick turnaround, then you're going to want a quail. Now also, quail eggs are so special because they have the most amount of nutrients in their eggs as pretty much anything that you can have. I mean, it's really like your own multivitamin that you have right there in an egg and everything that you could possibly need. And so a lot of people take a quail egg every day just as vitamins and they give it to their pets and their food as vitamins. And so, and so um, quail eggs are very valuable. Also, quails can't get salmonella. And so you don't have to worry about whether or not the eggs are contaminated, the meat is contaminated or anything like that. So there's that to consider as well. You never have to worry about whether or not you're gonna get salmonella. And then with a turnaround time of seven weeks to become fully mature and so quickly with their egg hatching, you can really produce your own food if you're even eating the quail easily. I mean, you start off with 12 birds you get them to lay in eggs, you hatch those eggs, you can increase the size of your flock tremendously in a single season. And then you can start harvesting those and eating them. And quail meat is apparently just like really amazing. So um, having quail is probably, uh, if you're gonna be like a prepper or a homesteader or something like that, uh, it's probably one of the most beneficial animals that you could have if you wanna have your own meat and eggs. Now also, uh, one of the reasons why I like quail so much is because they're tiny. They're so tiny, they're so quiet, and they're super cute. And so uh, it's really nice to be able to have these birds that are so special uh, on the homestead with us. I, I think that I like them even more than the ducks at this point. And also they're so tiny that it's easy to contain them. So they are not gonna be free range here. Keeping them in that, in that quail tractor, uh, they're gonna have as much fresh food as they could possibly desire. They're con completely contained. And I could put a lot more quail in that container if I wanted to, especially since we have a second layer on there, another shelf. So, uh, and then how easy is it to make another tractor if we need one? Uh, so I never have to worry about them getting my gardens. I don't have to buy a bunch of fencing to keep them out of stuff. Uh, keeping them contained, as long as we're rotating them on fresh grass every day, is a really good system for them and for us and for my gardens. So if we could have any birds, I would have the quail and I would get rid of the rest. Of course, I love the rest too. So we're gonna keep, be keeping all of them as well. So uh, yes, we have a lot of birds. Quail's probably my top priority and most important though. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have an absolutely wonderful day. If you could hit the like button, the subscribe, the notification bell, all those wonderful things, I'd really appreciate it and stay blessed.